Hi, this is Nathan Miller from Proving Ground. You know, one of the things I'm most fond of advocating for is the use of Excel in the design process. I'm oftentimes quoted as saying Excel is one of my favorite design tools out there, and, and that's certainly true. Um, Excel is often overlooked as just being one of those Microsoft Office tools that, that sits on your desktop, and you might open it up every now and then and make a spreadsheet and, uh, and save out some things, but really it can be a very powerful component to a design workflow and this tutorial series is going to guide you through a couple of, of my favorite workflows with the tool um, namely as it relates to some data management um, and data visualization to really show off uh, some some things about your your data so what I've set up is a is a workflow here um, with a programmatic uh, table um, this is a table that uh, catalogs different spaces in a building. Um, it has things related to department, sub-department, room, and area. And what I'm going to do is start to build up a kind of data management system that allows me to start to summarize this information, visualize it, um, and, and do interesting things to make this data presentable. You know, tools like Revit and other building information software are already great at making schedules uh, within the software. And I think one of the advantages of using something like Excel is to really build out systems that let you understand the, the information a little bit better than, than some of those other programs and, and really start to see and visualize this data. So one of the first things I'm going to do is open up a separate Excel workbook. Um, one of the things I'm, I'm going to be doing here is setting out a workflow where I have an Excel workbook that has raw data. Um, this is data that could be coming from another source um, like Revit or Rhino or Grasshopper. And I'm going to keep this as a separate workbook. Um, and the first thing I'm going to show you is how I can start to cross-link workbooks together um, to where I can maintain a kind of raw data source uh, in this case a program and link it into another workbook that I'm going to use primarily for um, data summaries, pivot, pivot tables, charts, and other visualizations. So what I'm going to do in this first workbook is select um, all of my data on this particular uh, worksheet um, that I've titled lab program. I'm going to select it and I'm just going to do a control C and when I do a control C that's going to copy the data and in my other workbook I'm going to do something um, called pasting as a link and if I right click in my first cell here in cell A1 of my second workbook I can right click and choose to paste as a link and what this does is something something very special instead of just pasting the data over it actually pastes a reference to this workbook. So if the data in this workbook for the program changes, um, the data within this, this other workbook will also change and update. So you could have someone that's kind of updating and managing this information and then you as a designer or a project manager or an architect uh, can, can start to slice and dice it without worrying about um, changing things up in, in this environment. This is one of the reasons why I like to break things out in this manner. It's going to be a little bit more collaborative with the, with the data. So inside of this dashboard workbook, calling it a, a dashboard workbook, because this is where I'm going to start building a dashboard, I'm going to create two sheets. Uh, I've already created this one worksheet called Sheet 1, and I'm going to rename it um, to be uh, called Linked Data. I'm then going to create another worksheet, and I'm going to call this worksheet Dashboard. So the, now that I have this, this data um, brought in, um, I can start making what are called pivot tables from this information. Now, this data is just one single flat table. Um, you can see that it's again, has the department, subdepartment, room, and area information. What a pivot table is is essentially a summary of this data. So if I just wanted to look at all the areas based on the different departments or the sub-departments, um, I could easily start to summarize this information using what's called a pivot table. So to create a pivot table, I'm going to just click uh, on cell A1 here. Um, in this case, cell A1 is the ID cell. 
I'm going to go over to the Insert tab and choose Pivot Table. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up um, another window that will allow me to either choose to create a pivot table on a new worksheet or choose to create it on an existing worksheet. And you can automatically see, you can see that automatically all of the data in this window has been selected. I'm going to choose to create one, a pivot table on an existing worksheet. In this case I want it on the worksheet that I called the dashboard. And I'm going to specify a location by hitting this button off to the, the right hand side of the location uh, window and it's going to ask me for a location on a spreadsheet. So I'm just going to navigate over to my dashboard tab and I'm going to click on A1 of this new um, of this of this new worksheet. And then I'm going to hit OK. And what you can see is that a new kind of interface pops up after you've select uh, successfully selected this this area of the worksheet. And now I can start to create what's called a pivot table and the way that we create a pivot table is by selecting which fields of the master data set we want to report out. So right now there's nothing being reported. Um, we haven't chosen any fields to report out. Um, but to get a sense of how this functionality works, I'm going to select the department. And we can see is what you can see happens is that when I choose and check the department layer under the rows category, uh, in this pivot table fields we have now department available to us and if I look at the pivot table itself you can see that we have lab A, B, C, and shared. So it's kind of collapsed this master data set and it's just now summarizing everything based on the unique names under the department field. And then if I want to quantify something about these rooms, I'm going to choose the area tab. Um, the area field is um, contains numeric information so that when I select it it's actually going to add up all that information and summarize it now as uh, you know totals of rooms that are contained within those individual departments. So again, uh, pivot table is a summary tool. Um, if I look again at this raw data set, you can have a bunch of areas individually itemized by rooms and with a pivot table I'm able to quickly generate a table that takes all the departments and then summarizes area by department. So if I want to add in some other le levels of complexity to this I could go to uh, the fields again and choose subdepartment. And the tool is smart enough to know that the subdepartment layer will then be added into this uh, field for rows and for each department we're now seeing the subdepartments created and then subtotals for everything by subdepartment and I could naturally take this to its conclusion and add in the room tab a room field here and we can now see each individual room per subdepartment in each department so really powerful way of, of beginning to interact with this information. I can add fields, um, take fields out as needed. Um, the other thing that you can do with pivot tables that are really interesting um, is this idea of creating a slicer. Um, and a slicer is a way that it will allow us to um, interact with this data in a more intuitive manner. So to create a slicer, we can just go up to the Analyze tab and find the Insert Slicer button. When the Insert Slicer menu pops up, it's going to ask us for a field to use uh, for slicing up our information. In this case, I'm just going to choose Department, which means that I'm going to be able to select the Department fields and use that to control how my pivot table is displaying. So when I hit OK, you can see that it has created a, a slicer that allows me to select different fields um, representing the different departments and as I click on these fields my pivot table is updating and displaying only the information relating to that department. If I want to select multiple departments I can always hold down control and then pick the other department which be, uh, becomes very useful if I want to start comparing between different departments or um, only displaying uh, a selected number of departments together um, and if I want to 
select every department, I can always click on uh, Department Lab A, hold down Shift, and then select all of the departments together. Slicers can also be used um, in conjunction with one another. So I'm just going to delete this slicer. And I'm going to go to the Analyze tab and choose Insert Slicer again. And in this case, I'm going to choose Department and Subdepartment together. And that's going to automatically create two slicers that I can start to use. Um, so if I uh, choose Lab A, you can see that my subdepartments then update with the available fields for Lab A. And then I can also start slicing the data based on subdepartments. So if I only want to see core and facilities for Lab A, I would just choose that top uh, field. And now I'm only showing for Lab A core and facilities. I can do a control click and do offices and support. Or if I wanted to add Lab B into this, I could add that in and it's going to show the same information for uh, for those subdepartments in you know per department. So that's some of the some of the interesting things you can do with slicers. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to go through how you can start to combine pivot tables and slicers to create dynamic charts. Um, and in Excel, those are called uh, pivot charts. And it's a live linking of of the pivot table data to a graphical representation of that data.